The Man with the Iron Fist is a, um, a story that bubbled in my head for some years. And I told it to a buddy, Eli Roth, on a long flight from Iceland. And he saw the vision of what it was. He got, this, he got what I had, and he took it in to uh, some producers who was interested in it wasn't ready. And so Eli uh, sat down with me for over a year through personal meetings and Skypes. We wrote it into a screenplay of, of about 130 pages from 90 to 130. And it was good and right. Power belongs to no one until it is seized through sex and violence. Writing a film is kind of tedious in a way, you know, but I learned that if you write it with music playing in the background, okay. it actually helps. Wow. One scene, for instance, was a song. You know what I mean? Like, so I would write that, I always have that song on repeat. And it, help, help, it does help you flow better, you know what I mean? I'd rather see it on the boardwalk than see it on the block. Quinn is my mentor. You know, the, the reason, one reason why this film is Quentin Tarantino Presents is not only because he's a producer and it's a business move. No, this is basically a student out of his chamber, you know what I mean, making a movie. You know what I mean? I, I think I may be, I, I guess I, I, I consider Eli my classmate, so Eli could be the first one that made it out, out, made it out of the class. But I'm maybe the second graduate of that school. I met Quentin on the press junket of Iron Monkey. Uh, we wound up becoming Kung Fu buddies. Uh, when he finished the script for Kill Bill, he gave me a copy to read. I was blown away by the script. Also blown away by him as a, as a, as a filmmaker, the kind of mind he had, the encyclopedia, walking encyclopedia of film. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I've met a master. Warriors, we'll see who's left standing and who's on their knees. Attack! I took the time to, uh, like I said, study all the angles of, of camera work. On the set of Kill Bill, I sat in the corner and with a composition notebook and was writing notes every day. Talent could be natural in a man, but yet if you, if you don't have a natural talent, talent can be learned, you know what I mean? You can train, I mean they could train monkeys to do shit, so you know a man could train to do things, you know what I mean? But yet if you have a little talent and you harness it and practice it, it'll grow to a great talent. I bought me some Canons, the 5D and the 7D, and I practiced with that camera for almost close to a year. Okay. Knowing my lenses, knowing the ISO, okay. you know what I mean? So when I got around my DP, I'd be like, well, give me a hundred, give me a 50, you know what I mean? Oh, I want to go wide, uh, let's go super wide. Give me a, a 15, you got a 15, we don't have a 15. All right, give me a 17. <laughs> it's best to watch a lot of old films and study them. It's best to watch the commentaries on DVDs. It's good to pick up different books, whether it's the director's vision, whether it's, you know, or the greatest 50 directors, and they give you a little synopsis of what they did. If life gave me my path how I want it, I'm planning to take this first movie as Enter the 36 Chambers to me. And that means I still got to give you a Takao, a Liquid Sword, a Cuban Link, <laughs> and all that, you know what I mean? And what this is, is the missing scene from the movie. <laughs> In the film, you will see this boat, but you see it when it's destroyed. We couldn't afford to shoot the scene. I didn't have enough for a master and commander budget. 